Hello everybody, it's me Alex and welcome to the newly refreshed and rebranded iRex Studios channel. I've got all these shiny things around me now and uh, webcam border and everything's fantastic. Anyway, so today I'm going to be doing something that uh, you can actually use practically uh, in a way. Uh, a lot of my videos have been very artistic but uh, this time I'm going to be doing something that you can make yourself upload to YouTube and people like. And I got quite good with it in After Effects. So. If you haven't guessed already, it's going to be to do with audio. What can we do in Blender? Visuals. So it's an audio visualizer. Before we get started, you're going to need to download the visualizer uh, plugin for Blender, and that's really easy. So if I just launch up Chrome, bear with me, and then switch over my camera, like so. And uh, I will link this in the description uh, of this video, and it's really easy to do. So uh, once you're on here, go to code and then download zip. Once you've downloaded the zip, what you're going to do is you're going to launch up Blender. And then go to edit preferences. And press install. And then you're going to find... Um, that plugin which I normally keep in my project files and add-ons and then you just press on it and click install and then it will install and it will come up and then just enable it so really easy so since we have Blender open Let's go ahead and delete all of that, and then just check the settings. We're going to go for 30 frames per oh gosh, 30 frames per second, and we're going to come to the frame range in a minute. And we want to be in EV today. You absolutely do not want to do this project in cycles. It will take days and days and days on your standard home PC. Um, if you're using a render farm, maybe, um, I tend not to. But before we do any of this, we need some audio to work with. Now, I pay for Monster Cat Gold, so I have found a song I want to use, uh, which is this. So I'm just going to download that quickly. I like drum and bass, you can use whatever you want. I, I love Monster Cat Gold, because I get to listen to music early, they're not sponsored. Um, only cost me six pounds a month and it means that I can use all of these songs uh, in um, my YouTube videos and not get copyright striked. Um, so let's save that to desktop. I want to use WAV, that's fine. Fantastic. So there's my file. Let's jump into Blender and again as usual I'm using an old um, file that I've done uh, to remind myself it's been a while since I've done this. So we've got a nice blank scene here. We're going to press on scene properties, go down to visualizer and select your audio path. So for me that is on the desktop and that was so fun dance accept. And the settings I am going to use are hold on Hundred and twenty eight bars bar width of zero point four amplitude of eight and I'll show you the different things in a minute. And a spacing of one. I'm gonna keep the bar colour white because we're actually going to add our own shader, really simple. We're not gonna use radial. Uh, what I need to figure out with radial is uh, on most of the visualizers you see on YouTube it's mirrored so it looks quite nice whereas this isn't so it's more like a clock and you get peaks but nothing and that's just really not pleasing to the eye um, and I think it'll be a simple case of mirroring or getting rid of half of it and instancing the other half which is what we're going to do today in a different way so once we've done that we are going to generate visualizer and then stuff's going to happen and we're going to wait 
Right, so that's now done. Now, the other thing that I need to do is turn off my camera so you can actually see the settings here that I covered up with my ugly mug. Bar color is there, radial, and if you enable radial, then you're going to get this radius uh, slider. Don't mess with it for now. And then you want to click on re or generate visualizer, which is what I did to get all of this. Anyway, let's bring up my mug and now it's done, but I'm zoomed quite far out. Uh, so let's select all of this. I'll scroll all the way, and there's 128 of them. Here we go. Now, if we scrub through the play like play uh, oh, timeline, you can see it moving, which is great. But what we need to do is we need to find out where exactly this song ends. So you can do it manually and that's pretty much what I did as I guessed. So if we have a look at this song details it's 3 minutes and 46 seconds so let us do a quick calculation to roughly estimate. So if we say it's 3 minutes times by 60, no, yeah, no. I'm just being an idiot. Right, that is 60 seconds in 3 minutes. Yeah, so it's 180 seconds song plus the 46. We want to divide that by 30 frames in a second. That gives us 8. <laughs> You're just going to watch me do maths now. 3 lots of 60, so that's 60 seconds plus 60 seconds plus 60 seconds plus 40 seconds. That's 220 seconds. Oh. 6,600. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. So let us, oops, go into Blender. And then we are going to jump to 6,600. Oh dear, I'm such an idiot. And then we can scrub. Still play. Oh dear. Go away, taskbar. Thank you. So it ends now. There, so let's put six seven sixty. Fantastic. Right, let's get into the scene setup a bit better. So just pick any point and click on Z. There we go. Shift A, add in a camera, and we're going to press Control or Zero to bring that to frame to view and then we're going to press G with the camera selected and middle click and we're just going to pull it out until that's perfectly framed and just scrub through and make sure that that top bar doesn't exceed the top of the camera which it doesn't so that's fantastic now up in your collections and objects what I am going to do is drag that camera to the scene collection and then I am going to select all of these bars drag them into this collection hide it and we'll name that collection audio bars oh and I did explain that if you change the amplitude, what's going to happen is it's going to make the bars higher. So if you use the amplitude of 1, it won't be very visible. I found 8 to work at this scale. I'm using 1080p. I found that if I use 4K, even EV takes a while to render. Anyway, so in your sling, select Shift A, and we're going to add a collection instance audio bars. Easy enough. With that selected, 
come over here and then we are going to invert the scale on the y-axis minus one so we have a perfect mirror and because it's an instance it copies all of the animation data which is lovely right okay so okie dokie there we are is that the right way up yes we're now going to add some little progress bars so it's so you can show how far along the song is and again this is really really simple i think <laughs> my other project i just used uh planes yeah i did so shift a mesh plane and we're going to move that to the top oh that's scale move it oh that's on z why move it to the top like so and then we're going to zoom in so shift middle click to drag g y bring it up it can be a little bit outside it's not doesn't have to be perfect and zoom out and then we're going to scale it along the x axis to the whole width and this you do kind of want to get perfect so just zoom in to that camera border it's pretty good yeah and then we're going to animate this and it's just a really simple animation first create a new uh, collection and we're going to call this progress bar and we'll add this into there future me here um, an easier way of doing this you don't actually have to add it into a collection you can select the bar top that I made and instead of pressing shift D to duplicate it you can press alt D which will duplicate it as an instance of the original thing that you've um, duplicated so that means that any uh, transformations or animations that we do to bar top will be copied in that instance uh, duplicate so you don't need to add it to a collection um, but I found it easier at this point. And then we're going to shift a uh, instance collection progress bars and GY to the bottom like so. So we've got one on top and bottom. Why the heck not? So let's get to animating. Go to frame uh, one. Turn, am I? Yeah. And then we are going to press G and X and slide that out. And you can see the bottom instance is moving as well. And again, you want to make sure that this is pretty much outside because we're going to add a. We're using EV Bloom in this, so it might creep in. But we're going to select that, we'll hover over it and press I to keyframe and then scroll to the end when that stops which is pretty much there and then we're going to G, X and slide it all the way in about there and then press I and now you can see that it moves slowly which is just perfect right let's get to some uh, shading and maybe do a text uh, very quickly uh, so let's do shift A uh, we'll do a text we're gonna hide uh, that and that and that and that just so we can see the text I lied, we're going to have the progress, uh, not progress bars, audio bars. 
go to your text, center it up, center it up, scale it up, and font. I'll go for something like this, which is a bit drum and bassy, isn't it? Now, what's the name of the song? So fun, dance. So, with the text selected, press tab to go into edit mode, and it was so fun, dance. Fantastic. And we're going to bring that up above and go to the camera, and we're going to scale that up massively. Yeah, that's good. Let's add some thickness to this and duplicate it because we want to make like a neon ring to light it up. So we're going to do Shift D, click off, and bring that up slightly more. And let's play with these text layers. So the bottom one is going to be solid. So let's go to Geometry and Extrude. Probably want to uh, apply the scale first, so Control A, Scale. There we go, that's better. If you don't apply the scale, you get some really weird um, like ratioing, which we don't want. Uh, nice point three meters. That's good. Bring that up a bit more. And let's add a nice bit of beveling. Point one meters, that's good. And don't shade smooth, because you can't. <laughs> Idiot. Uh, and on this top one, we're going to select none, control A, apply the scale, and just add a bevel. Point 0.1. So we've got this nice sort of uh, overlay. Perfect. Uh, we could probably go thicker actually on our text neon. On text neon. Let's give that just a tad more. 0.15? Yeah, that's looking good to me. Cool. Let's get into the shading. So, come to your render properties and select all of them. Uh, film, we don't want transparent. Uh, color management, I'm going to go for high contrast because that always looks a little bit better. And under world settings, I am going to select black. And then we'll come over to viewport shading. And everything's white. How lovely. So, what shall we do first? We will select one of these bars, bring up a new window. No, uh, cancel. Thank you. Bring up a new screen and select a shader editor. And under BZ color, which is this, we are going to just rename this uh, gradient bars. Delete all of that. So it gets rid of all that white. That's what we want. We want to now. <sighs> Thank you. Do something really simple, it seems. We're going to. Add a principled BSDF. Plug that straight into the surface. So we're back to our white. And we're not going to mess with the base color. We're actually going to plug in a color ramp straight into the emission. So add a color ramp. Nothing happens. But you can see a slight bit of glowing, which is nice because the emission strength is set to 1. We actually bring that in you can see it's uh, adjusting how much it's glowing but we actually want this to be um, like a gradient and the easiest way to get a gradient uh, with this sort of animation is because we're going to be flipping it is shift a and we're going to add in a wave texture plug that straight in like so and we're going to have three points on the color ramp and we want them at 0.5 and one. And go nuts, go with any color you want. Uh, I'm going to go with the Irix Studios colors because why in the 
flip not. Mm. That looks cool to me. And the settings you want to use on the wave texture, or what I found works for me, is select Y. You want it on bands Y sign scale of 0.15. Distortion 0, Detail 0, Detail Scale 0, Detail Roughness 0, and Phase Offset 0. You can see something's coming through, which is lovely. Emission Strength 6, and you can see now, that's looking pretty good. And let's just adjust some final settings, I think. Nope, that's all good. So that's all set up there. If you come across to the actual, there you go, uh, viewport shading look, uh, rendered view, then we have it with the bloom and the colors pop out a lot more. Um, yeah, so that's all you need to do. And because we've scaled minus, the uh, texture is actually flipped, which is fantastic. So let's flip back over to here. Um, Progress bars, really simple. Again, do whatever you want. Um, I could use my glass texture, but even I'm getting a bit annoyed with it. So <laughs> let me just do um, a nice color. Nice teal and emission strength 40. So it's going to light up the whole thing. And I don't do a background on this, but again, you can if you want to. And what we could even do is bring those bars down a bit, but that will mess up with the positioning. Yeah, because we've keyframed it, so just leave it as is. Cool. And finally, we are going to mess around with this. So first I am going to just add a uh, base text. Again, nothing fancy, just make it really metallic, pull that roughness down, I want it really reflective, no emission. Um, go about halfway on that. And then for this we're going to do um, neon text. So this one we can get a bit funky in. And I'll show you how I've done that. So we're going to get rid of the principled BSDF. We're going to add an emission. Plug that into the surface. Right, it's not that simple. Let's zoom in on the D. And let's not zoom on the D. <laughs> oh, I'm so immature, it's ridiculous. Um, add a color ramp. Color into the color, noise texture. So this is very similar to my glass texture. Uh, can I use the color into the factor? And with the node wrangler enabled, press Control T with noise texture selected. Um, and I'm going to use the object coordinates, not the generated. Just so it's easier to see what we're doing, I am going to press Control Shift and click on the color ramp. And that's going to plug straight in to the material output so we can actually see what we're doing here. And then we're going to mess around with our settings. Um, I found 190. Yeah, no, that's too much on this. So you're just going to pull that back. We want like nice hot spots, but non hot spots. That's good. Just mess around. And let's add a bit of detail. Actually, whack that all the way up. Roughness. Yeah, we want that nice and crunchy. Distortion. No, let's have no distortion. Because that looks a lot better. Just play with this black value until you get something you like. Bear in mind where the white is, is where it's going to um, glow. So if we plug the emission back in. And the emission strength should be about 40. There we go. I'm going to select that nice 
play. There we are. Nice simple uh, neon sort of effect. If we go to the viewport, it's looking really good. Okay, let's uh, just frame this up a bit better. Um, so I can get the reflection in this uh, metal text. I'm going to try something. I'm going to reduce the focal length. G, oops, G middle click, and I'm going to bring that, oops, right in. Probably bring it in just a little bit more. So that fits nicely. And now we can see the reflection. That's really good. We can see at the beginning there's a bit of this glow. Um, so we can probably just uh, animate that to turn off. But I'm going to keep that for now. That's fine with me. Right. So that's all that set up. What you need to do now is you need to go back to your scene properties. And with Visualizer add audio to VSE which is your video editing workspace and you can see now the song is there and if we play it fantastic back to layout let's render this image and then we'll get into compositing and again it's going to be exactly the same trick I always use which is the distortion so there we go, looks pretty good. Very, very simple. You can add a background if you want, but I don't want to. So compositing, use nodes. And we're going to Shift A, Viewer. And we are going to link these two together by plugging that in, Shift, right click, drag, boom. So anything that you do to the render layer will affect the composite and the viewer. And what I did here, I used glare. And I used Lens Distortion. And this is how we're going to... No, no. This is how we're going to set it up. Ghosts. Medium. We're going to go low. Iterations, 3. Color modulation, 0.25. Mix. Don't want this so punchy, so I used 0.7 or minus 0.7, that's nice, and the threshold kept as, kept as one. We're going to have jitter and fit, and we're going to use a distortion of minus 0.1 and a dispersion of 0.2 in the positive. We've got this really cool effect, and if we Oh, can't do that yet. We've got to render it out, so I'm going to go ahead and render this out now. What you need to do, I said in one of the last uh, episodes, don't worry about audio. This time, we need to worry about audio. So come across to your render properties. Uh, yeah, output properties. Keep it as 1080p, otherwise it's going to be ridiculous. Frame end, keep it as that, that's fine. So, now I've remembered to move my camera over this side of the screen, you can actually see the settings. I'm going to select my output as desktop, um, keep it somewhere that's easily accessible. I like to save it to an SSD, it tends to save faster, and select FFmpeg video, color RGB, you don't want it in black and white obviously, color management, follow scene, um, so I've set it to high contrast uh, under the film settings, uh, color management, blah de blah de blah, keep that. Encoding, you want to select MPEG 4. And then under video, you want to select perceptually lossless. Make sure it's on H.264, which is the codec. It says it there. Um, and audio. For this, we don't want to use PCM unless you're using DTS and Dolby Digital, I believe. Don't use it. Opus, not sure what that is. MP3, good for quick file saving. MP2, who uses MP2 anymore? Um, FLAC, which is your file for lossless audio codec, so you're going to get the best quality, uh, it's uncompressed, so it's going to be quite a big file size. I'm using WAV, which is also 
quite uncompressed. It's still a bit compressed, but um, AC3 and AAC I'm not going to use. So just stick it as MP3. Stay on stereo. Again, we're not using four channels, 5.1 surround or 7.1. not using subwoofers. I only have a two-speaker setup. Sample rate at 48 kilohertz. This is in hertz. Uh, I don't want to go that high. Bit rate of 122. Uh, you could probably push it to 320, which I believe MP3 is. I should probably check the file. Uh, volume 1. And once you've done that, you can render it out, which is what I'm doing now. It's going nuts. Can't actually see anything. Um, I started this render at 1.52 a.m. and it's still going. It's quicker than uh, cycles would be, um, but I'm just going to keep that. Once it's rendered, then I'll finish off this video. <laughs> Mental. Ah. Right, so we finally rendered. Uh, it took an hour and a half, um, which isn't too awful. But this is the final result, really happy with it. The visualizer's working, the glare's really working with that visualizer. Um, I quite like the song, so I'm gonna to listen to it for a bit longer. But thank you for watching. Um, I will show you how to do radial visualizers um, once I've done a bit of practice. I'm gonna now probably take a bit of time and rework my uh, intro video and outro video. So there's not gonna be an outro video now, it's just gonna be this. Thank you to everyone that subscribed over the past two weeks. Thank you for all your lovely comments. It's been such an ego boost for me. It's been amazing. Can't wait to do more videos for you. Anyway, have a good night. Well, for me, it's 3.24 in the morning. Um, enjoy whatever you're doing, and thanks for watching. Goodbye.